on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas, we salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father. Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise, oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord, we thank you. I'm
on behalf of the music ministry of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas, we salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. <laughs> Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise, oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord, we thank you. Oh, I'm all powerful. We see your face. We see
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can guide and guard. Yeah, only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise. For this Father, Lord. We thank you.
Adia Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father. Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise, oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord. We thank you, yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise, oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord. We thank you. I'm all powerful.
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guide. Only a father can bless a father.
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Yeah, only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise. Oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord. We thank you. Oh, 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 oh,
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guide. Only a father can bless a father. Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise for this Father, Lord. We thank you. I'm all about
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Yeah, only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise, oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord. We thank you, yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father.
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father, only a father can guide and guide. Only a father can bless a father. Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise. Oh, yeah. For this Father, Lord. We thank you. I'm all proud of you. We see your faith.
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guide. Only a father can bless a father. Thank you for all this Father Lord. We are grateful for this Father Lord. We give you all the praise for this Father Lord. We thank you. I'm all proud of you.
Ede Adeboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Oh 
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father and Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise. For this Father, Lord. We thank you.
Adi Adeboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father, only a father can guide and guard. Only a father can bless a father. And Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise for this Father, Lord. We thank you. I'm all proud of you.
that they are Deboye on behalf of the music ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Americas. We salute the grace of God upon your life as we continue to thank God for your 80th birthday. This song is meant for you and to the glory of God. Be blessed, Daddy. Be blessed, Mommy, even as you enjoy it. Father can give a father, only a father can guide and guide, only a father can bless a father and Thank you for this Father, Lord. We are grateful oh, for this Father, Lord. We give you all the praise. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Lord. We thank you. Oh, 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 Let us appreciate him for his mercy. Let us thank him. Let us thank him. Let us appreciate him. Let us appreciate him. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you because there is no life unto you. We want to thank you because, Lord, we are alive today. We are alive in you. Thank you for joining mercies. Thank you for joining mercies by road. Thank you for joining mercies by rail. Thank you for joining mercies by air. We are very, very grateful. Thank you, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining mercies for our Father and the Lord and the entourage. Thank you for everybody that has come from far and near. We are very grateful. Thank you, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. In your name. We commit this program unto you. Mighty God, have your way, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Take absolute control, Lord, in the name of Jesus. At the end of today, let us be able to say we have met with you again. Thank you, our God. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. To bring down the glory of God for us tonight, let's welcome tonight the Impact Choir of Glorious, Evan Glorious Embassy here in Dallas. Put your hands together for them. Praise the Lord! Hey! 
inside of me His name
come on, lift those hands to heaven and just magnify me in this awesome atmosphere. Say, Father, I have come to give you the glory. I've come to honor you. I've come to bow before you. I've come to exalt your name. Come on, somebody. Lift those hands to heaven and just magnify him. Open your heart, open your mind and say, Father, I'm here to exalt. I'm here to magnify you. I'm here to give you the honor and the praise and the adoration.
help us in. Come on, go before the Lord and begin to declare, Father, you are great. Father, you are glorious. Father, you are powerful. Father, you are excellent. Father, you are good. Father, you are awesome. Father, you are marvelous. Father, you are powerful. Father, you are perfect in all your ways. Father, you are holy. You are great. You are kind. Somebody open your mouth, everybody. Come on, I'm telling you. You are too faithful to fail me. Is that what you are saying tonight? Yeah. You are too faithful to disappoint me. Come on, if you know it, lift your voice. Oh, sing it, everybody. Sing. Yourself in my life. Sing it out, everybody. And I've come to me. Lift your hands to heaven and say, You are too faithful to fail. Can we sing that together to Jesus tonight? Lift your voice, everybody. You are too faithful, say. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to disappoint me. Come on. You are too faithful to disappoint me. He has come to show up for us tonight. You've proven yourself. You've proven yourself. Disappoint us. Oh, Kadaba Kadia Kadabo. Shut up. Hey, you've proven yourself. We have seen your wonders, your miracles again and again. It is impossible for you to fail. You are too faithful to fail. I'll put you in front. In front of my melodies.
matters. Nothing is more important to you. to heaven and say, you are all divine. Come on, let's sing to the Lord tonight. That's why we are here. You are all I'll put you, everybody say, I'll put you in front, in front of my head. It's a personal confession. Speak to your Lord you tonight. You are all the matters. You are all the matters. that all we can do. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, for him alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to be praying the next minutes. Trust that heaven's will open upon each and every one of us lift our voices up unto the God of heaven. Can I hear amen from Praise the Lord. The first prayer we're going to be making this evening is to ask to bless the God of heaven. I like to take a prayer from Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God, blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual in heaven, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can you indulge me as I go over what I just said? Amen. I said we're taking the first prayer from Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse number 3. I read, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The prayer we're going to draw from this verse of scripture is to bless the Lord profoundly, for each time we gather for ministers' conference or ministers' meeting or workers' meeting, the Lord certainly visits with us, blesses us with all manner of spiritual gifting. And we can see that demonstrated and manifested in each of our lives. We want to lift our voices, recognizing the presence of God in this place, and we want to thank him for always, always, always blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He's blessed our families. He's blessed our ministry. He's blessed the church of God. It can only be God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to open your heart and your mouth as we bless the God of heaven who has blessed us and continue to bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Please open your mouth and bless the God of heaven. It can only be God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. 
the one who is higher than the highest, the one who is greater than the greatest, the one who is bigger than all, the one who is better than the best, continues to bless us. Please open your mouth and bless the God of heaven with all. Bless him for doing what he's been doing in the redeemed Christian church of God. North America, in the Americas, in Nigeria, all over, all over. God has always been God to us in the redeemed Christian church of God. Yesterday, our Father in the Lord said, the headquarters of God is here. Bless the God of heaven because he has decided to pitch his headquarters here. So bless the God of heaven. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Thank him. Worship him. Worship him. Thank God for Johnny Mercy's for all the brethren who came from far and near. Bless the God of heaven who has brought us and assembled us in this meeting. We trust the God of heaven that once again he will bless us with spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. God will pour forth his blessings. He will pour forth his anointing. He will pour forth his mercies. He will pour forth his grace on each and every one of us. One more time, God will do what he alone can do. So bless him in advance of what he's going to do. He's going to do something to, he's going to do something spectacular. He's some, going to do something that you will never, never recover from today in the name of Jesus. So go ahead and bless him. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the praise. Thank you for our Father in the Lord, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian church of God. Thank him for journey mercies. Thank him for all. For, thank him for the AGO. Uh, thank him for all the ministers and leaders in the Americas. Bless the God of heaven and just recognize his presence here and give it to him in praise and honor. In praise, give to God. Give to him. He alone deserves all that we can give to him in praises and worship. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God. In Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Brethren, Bible tells us in Psalm 107, Psalm 107, verse number 20. Psalm 107, verse number 20. He said, he sent his word. I am persuaded and convinced beyond, 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 beyond that God will send his word to someone here today. I believe I want to be the one that God will send his words to. But I know that God will send a specific word. There are seasons and times. In each season, God will deliberately and intentionally pump his word, send his word to someone. I believe this is my season and this is my time. That God will send a word. He will send some word into my spirit. He will send the word of healing. He will send the word of deliverance. He will send, it will quicken my body. He will quicken my life. He will send his word. I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, say, Father, send your word to my life. This season now, in the name of Jesus, in this conference, you will send your word. You will send your word of healing. You will send your word to quicken. You will send your word to transform again. You will send Rema from your word. You will send your Rema into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, 
you will send your word. You will send your word. You will quicken me wherever I have, wherever I'm slack. Oh God, you will send your word to rejuvenate, to quicken, to help me, to move me, to motivate me, to enhance my spiritual life. Send your word. Oh God, send your word. Father, send your word. Send your word to me in the name of Jesus. True, your servant, our Father in the Lord, send your word to me, oh God. Oh God, send your word. Father, send your word. You know my need. You know where I'm aching. You know where the pain is. You know where I am diminished. You know where the enemy has diminished me. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, as you send your word, I will be quickened. I will be restored. I will be restored in the name of Jesus. So, oh God, thou who knoweth the hearts of men and the needs of men, oh God, do not pass me by. Pass me by, and oh, do not pass me by, oh gentle Savior. Father, send your word, 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 send your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. I know that I know that I know that as we have prayed by faith, the Almighty God who answers prayers. He's recognized your voice. He's recognized you. And therefore, he's determined to send a word into your life. To send a word into your circumstances. To send your word into any area that has been broken. Every area that is broken, the God of heaven through his word will be mended. It will be mended tonight and subsequently in this conference in the name of Jesus every speaker is inspired by God that will stand here to speak every speaker loaded by the power of the Holy Ghost would have a word for us therefore God he would download into your spirit his word his word his word his word thank you father Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can I extract an amen from someone here? Hallelujah. Please jam those hands of yours together. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for one of our ACOs. Pastor Charles Adegoke from South America. Is that the best you can do? Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. To continue the service once again tonight, we want to invite for a special number one of our own pastor, Pastor Arike Okonlawo from LCCG Victory Temple Bowie. Put your hands together for the Lord for him, for her. The helper is in the house tonight, amen. Our helper, your helper, my helper. Father, we lift up our hands and our hearts as we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. 
Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's rise on our feet tonight as we welcome the chairman of the American Pastor Dr. James Fadell to give us the opening prayer for tonight. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as he come to bless us. Amen. Is that the best you can do? Put your hands together for the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Help me welcome your neighbor. Help, help me welcome your neighbor. I said, you are welcome to God's own city. You are welcome to God's headquarter. You are welcome to the assembly of the saints of the living God. You are welcome to the third heaven. You are welcome to blessings in the name of Jesus. We are going to sing this song as you go around and welcome your neighbor. Kiss them, headbutt them, kick them. Anything you can do just to welcome them. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Brothers or brothers, sisters or sisters. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, you are welcome in the name of God the Son, you are welcome in the name of God the Holy Spirit. You may be seated majestically in your Father's house in the name of Jesus. Let me tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, 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 if my hallelujah is going to disturb you, there are a lot of seats at the back. I'm in my Father's house and I'm free to shout, to jump, and exalt the name of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. I want to sincerely appreciate the Deputy Continental Overseer in the house in the person of Pastor Peter Ola, Olawali all the way from Canada. I welcome you, sir. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. All the ACOs, all the Sadgos, all the provincial pastors, let me celebrate them, help me celebrate them, help me celebrate them. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. I want to sincerely appreciate my senior brother in the person of Pastor Bayo Adeyokunu, who was in charge of this minister's conference, himself and his lovely, 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 lovely wife, who have done an outstanding job of the program and making sure that we are all set to go. Give the Lord a clap offering. If not for him, give it to her, give it to her. Give the Lord a clap offering for her. She's the one helping him out. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. It shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Also, the ambassador, the Nigerian ambassador to the U.S., hallelujah, help us celebrate him. He's seated here. Help wave, help wave, and say, sir, you are welcome. We celebrate you. You always go everywhere with your wife. It seems you guys are related somehow. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. We appreciate your wife. It is well with your soul. And give it up for the choir. Give it up for the choir. God bless you. It's going to be an awesome, awesome minister's conference in the name of Jesus. Quickly turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament. Chapter 23, verse 14. We are going to read it together. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 14. In the original, original King James Version. Can we read it together once you go? For the Lord thy God 
worketh in the midst of to do what? To deliver you, to give up thy enemies before thee, therefore shall thy camp be, I can't hear you, be what? And see that no unclean thing is found in thee, and God turn away from thee. God will not turn away from thee in the name of Jesus. Therefore, your environment must be clean. Your heart must be clean. Your interactions must be clean. If you see any paper on the floor, who are you going to pass the buck to? Who is going to pick it up? So the Lord said, is here in this camp. Therefore, this camp must be kept clean. This camp must be kept holy. We are here to hear from heaven. So you must be attentive. You must pay attention. You must be willing to hear from heaven. And the Almighty God will hear your prayers in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today, Wednesday, 5th of June, 2022, that the Almighty God will lift you to a higher ground. I can only hear amen on this side. I say the Almighty God, the God of the redeemed Christian Church of God, we lift you to a higher ground in the name of Jesus. Forward ever, upward movement shall be your portion. Every day of this week, every day of this month, every day of this year, in the name of Jesus. The presence of the Almighty God will go with you wherever you go, in the name of Jesus. Heaven's light shall guide you, shall protect you, in the name of Jesus. Your feet will not be moved in the name of Jesus. It will preserve your going out and your coming in. It will preserve your soul in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. So the question is, why am I here? Why are you here? Amen? The plan of God for you is very, very clear. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. This is God speaking to James Fadell. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thought of peace, not of evil, to do what? Help me out, help me out. To give me an expected end. You will receive your expected end in the name of Jesus. Personally, you shall be great. Family-wise, you shall be great. In the areas of leadership, you shall be great. Our organization shall be great in the name of Jesus. But, but one thing I observed is that as I study the Bible, or as you study the Bible, please study the character of God also. You study the Bible. You study what again? I can't hear you. Because one of the characters of God that I have found is that he tests and tries his people. What does he do? And does what? And the more God wants to use you, the more he will test you. And the more he will try you. It is one thing for you to trust God. It's another thing for God to trust you. Did you hear what I just said? It's one thing for you to do what? And it's another thing for God to do what? To trust you. Before he can trust you enough to commit great things, to commit precious things into your life, he will test you and try you severally. Hallelujah. He tested Abraham. He tested Moses. He tested Joseph. He tested David. All his people that he used. Help me tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Are you ready for God's test? And in testing you, the reason is to purify your inner being. In testing you is to ground you. 
to solidify you for his work. In testing you is to know what is inside of you. Maybe some of you don't even know what's inside of you. When God is testing you, he's trying, he's making you to know what is inside of you. And in testing you, is getting you ready for his work. Hallelujah. So that you and I can be a channel of blessing, a channel of his power. The testing and the trials of God is not to kill you or to destroy you, but rather they are tokens of his love and a preparation for greater works. You will do greater works for the Almighty in the name of Jesus. Do you know, sir, with God, there is no carryover in his testing. You either pass or fail. Let me ask your neighbor, see, are you going to pass or are you going to fail? You will pass in the name of Jesus. But as you keep on passing, as you keep on succeeding, hallelujah, God will continue to use you for his glory in the name of Jesus. And when God begins to use you, you will find your voice. What you will find? Let me pray for your neighbor. Again. Say, neighbor, I pray for you. May you find your voice. May you never be a noise. May you never be a noise. May you find your voice. When we are talking about voice, sir, ma, uh, by the special grace of God, when I have time, I'm an amateur, I play golf. Sometimes, not all the time. And when you are, how many of you play golf in the house? Not the elders in the front. They are too holy to play golf. They are too holy to exercise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In, 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 in golf, can you give me an iron? An iron. Praise the Lord. There is something when you play golf, they call it the sweet spot. Amen. When you get an iron or a driver, it is marked there where the ball can hit. They call it the sweet spot. When those who play golf and they play it very well, when you swing the iron, Amen. And you hit what you call the sweet spot. It is effortless. Amen. It is accelerating. It is intoxicating. Effortlessly, you take it to where it wants to go. If you are using a wedge or a sand wedge, it's supposed to take you out of the sand or take maybe like 60 or 70 yards. But when you are using the driver, amen, that is the big guns. Amen? There's what you call the sweet spot here. When you swing it well for amateurs, maybe like 250 yards, but for people like Tiger Woods, Jordan Speaks, Phil Mickelson, they go 400 yards with the driver. The question is, what is the difference between the amateur golfer and the professional golfer that is paid millions to play this. It's the same iron. It's the same wood. It's the same driver. It is the amount of time they use in practicing the game. Amen? Amateurs like us and Master Pastor Ajayi Adeniran, maybe we hit the ball. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Maybe once a month, we go there. No wonder when we hit the ball, it goes to the right, it goes to the left instead of going right. What is the difference between a professional golfer? Because he has taken his time to master his art. He has found the voice of the driver. He has found the voice of the pitching word. He has found the voice of the three wood. Sir, ma, for you to be relevant in the kingdom of God. To do exploits for the almighty God, you must find your voice. And finding your voice, there's what you call in leadership, the SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis. Your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your what? And your what? 
You don't know it. Hallelujah. When you find your sweet spot, when you know your strength, your weaknesses, opportunities, and your... I'm not going to tell you. Amen? When you find it, sir, God use you more for his glory. No wonder my father and the Lord can come to the altar after he has prayed, practicing praying in the spirit all night long. And say, but daddy doesn't sweat. He has found his sweet spot. Hallelujah. Effortlessly driving the ball into the heart of his people. Your prayer today, as we embark on this minister's conference, is number one, Father, let me find my voice. Father, help me find my sweet spot. The people have 1,000 churches, 1,000 member church. They don't pray longer than you are. They are not holier than you are, but they find their sweet spot. But in finding your sweet spot, sir, you must be willing to listen, to be trained. Amen? God has prepared my father in the Lord and other ministers of God. They have been fasting for this, to bring the word of life into your life. So that when you connect to heaven, when you find your sweet spot, ministry becomes easy. Amen. You find destiny helpers. Your church grow. Your organization grow. Your leadership grow. Then you are going to become a better wife, a better husband. Shall we stand today in the name of Jesus and say, my father, my father, my father, my father, I thank you because you have a plan for me, a good plan, not of evil, to give me an expected end. My father, my father, your expected end for my life in the name of Jesus. Your destiny for my life. Your purpose for my life. Let me find it in the name of Jesus. Help me, help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Help me find my purpose. Help me fulfill destiny. Help me finish well. Help me finish strong in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Prayer number two, my father, my father. As I study your word... Help me study the character of God. I know you test people. As you test me, oh God, don't let me flunk. Don't let me fail. Help me to succeed. Help me to finish well. Help me to finish well. Abraham was tested. Abraham passed. Moses was tested. Moses passed. Joseph was tested. Joseph passed. David was tested. David passed. My father, my father. Help me, help me, help me pass the test that you are going to give to me in the name of Jesus. Purify me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me know by the training I'm going to receive this week, O oh God, to know what is within me, within me, within me, in the name of Jesus. Help me to get ready for the great revival that is coming in the name of Jesus. Make me a channel of blessing in the name of Jesus. Help me, O oh God, to find my sweet spot in the name of Jesus. That ministry will not be hard in the name of Jesus. Like the golfers find the sweet spot without stress. Instead of hacking the ball, instead of the ball going right or left, stretch short. My father, my father, help me find my sweet spot in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Do exceedingly, do abundantly, more than we ask and more than we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let me turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, 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 buckle up your belt as we are about to begin the minister's conference in the name of Jesus. For the night comment, I say for the night comment, when no man shall walk. Therefore, brothers and sisters, Philippians chapter 3, verse 16, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing, and the glory of the Lord shall tabernacle in his temple. God bless you. Be ready and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
give it up to our chairman again. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's give it up to our chairman. Please be seated. God bless you. I want us to turn our Bible to Zechariah 8, verse 12. Zechariah 8, verse 12. For the seed shall be prosperous, divine shall give her fruit, and the grand shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. I want to encourage us tonight to sow a seed. The Bible says, the seed shall be prosperous. The seed shall be prosperous. So now I want us to sow a seed. And I want to share a personal story just to emphasize the power of seed, the power of seed. In 1994, I was working as a physician and I was earning 11,500 Naira. That was good old days. And to the glory of God, I was challenged to sow a seed of 33,000, three times my salary. I responded by faith. Within two months, the Lord broke the strong hold of poverty in my life. And I'm enjoying that up to this day. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause. I was working in, the, in Oshodi, and I met uh, one of my schoolmates who gave me just an information. Do you know Swaziland is a visa-free country? And that was the information that I took and I took a step of faith to Swaziland. Within two months of getting to Swaziland, I was given a job, a car, a house, a maid, and I believe it's that seed that I sowed within the span of few months. The seed shall be prosperous. And I'm believing God tonight that somebody will be wise and sow a good seed. And by the grace of God, after we have given, we have sown. I'm going to make seven declarations. And I'm sure there is somebody here that this seed will terminate every siege in your life. I want us to rise up as we give to the Lord. There are different ways we give. You can test give to this number, 903-218-9595. Or you can go to RCCG, the Americas. It's on the screen. So the choir will be leading us. Somebody shout glory! glory! Can we please run up on our feet anywhere we are? Let's give to the Lord joyfully. Come on, let's jump up on our feet. With our dancing tonight. Heavenly Lord, your name is wonderful, your name is excellent, your name is beautiful. I worship you, Lord, for you are mighty. You got the whole world in your hands. Heavenly Father.
ego. Hey, you are not just a lie. Everybody coming out. You are a prayer. Shout hallelujah. If you have not given your offering, shout hallelujah. The ushers will locate you. Please, this is the seed you have sown. I want you to stretch forth your hand to the altar, to our Father in the Lord. Let's stretch forth our hand to our Father in the Lord. He takes vision, He takes grace to do everything our Father is doing. With this seed you have sown today, may God secure your generational blessings. May this seed secure your enlargement. May God exceed your expectations in the name of Jesus. May heavenly dew fall upon this seed to bring forth great harvest to bring forth great doors, to bring forth great joy, to bring forth great rest, to bring forth great favor, to bring forth great wisdom, to bring forth great understanding, to bring forth great earth, to bring forth great possessions, to bring forth great greatness, to bring forth great agreement, to bring forth great gift in this conference, to bring forth great wonder, to bring forth great shout, to bring forth great dominion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's welcome the heavenly, impact heavenly glorious choir as they sing the first hymn for the night, more about Jesus will I know. The wordings, you'll find it on the screen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Why, please. Uh, 
Shall we rise as we sing the hymn tonight? chorus one more time as a choir go and sit down and my father in the Lord we bring the word let's sing it one more time the chorus more more about Jesus more about Jesus Beside me, beside me. 
Holy One of Israel, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the Unchangeable Changer, we worship you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for calling us into ministry. Thank you for all you've done for us thus far. Thank you for what you will yet do for us. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for journey mercies granted to your children. Thank you for those who are yet on the way. Thank you because we know somehow this is going to be a week we will never forget. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please send your word and let the power in your word bring healings to us and deliverance to our families. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. about shaking hands with one or two people and say, God will bless you mightily. Uh, and then uh, you may please be seated. Uh, I thought the last time we were here, this, I made some suggestion about the light. This light is coming straight into my eyes. I will need a special divine intervention to be able to read my notes. Ah, that's a little better. But uh, I thought the light would be, be something coming from above, so I'll be able to read my notes. I used to think that America is way, way ahead of uh, Ifewara. I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> Good to see you. Glory be to God. <laughs> mm. 
We will go straight to work because we have a lot of ground to cover and we haven't got much time. So we'll go straight to John chapter 9, verse 4, which is the passage chosen for this minister's conference. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. I will want you to read this passage with understanding. as we will try as much as possible to take the verse a word at a time. And where that's not possible, probably a phrase at a time. The first word here is I. The next one is must. The next one is walk. And the next will be the walks. And followed by of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. We will try by the special grace of God to see how much of this we can digest between today and tomorrow. When we come to a gathering of this nature and things get a bit rough, thank you, sir. There's always a tendency for us to feel that God is talking to my neighbor and not to me. I don't know if we have ever felt like that before but once in a while, while the preacher is preaching and is condemning certain things uh, that make us a bit uncomfortable, we console ourselves by saying, he can't be talking to me must be talking to my neighbor. There's a story in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1 to 7. 2 Samuel chapter 12, from verse 1 to 7. A prophet came to King David and told him a story of a rich man who robbed a poor man of the only lamb he had and used it to entertain his visitors instead of taking one out of the many that he had. And David went into a rage that man will surely die. And then the prophet turned to him and said, Thou art the man. Uh, 
I will ask you to pray a prayer. Deep from within you. And say to the Almighty God, talk to me this week. Me. I'm not talking of my neighbor. Talk to me this week. Shall we pray that prayer for just two minutes? This week, Lord, it's me who wants to hear from you. Talk to me, me, not my wife, not my husband, not my coordinator, my boss, me. Talk to me. May God answer your prayers in Jesus' name. We start with the word I. I must walk. I. Our God is a God of individuals. I'm sure we've heard that before. Whenever he wants to talk to a congregation, no matter how large, he will address himself to individuals. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man of Revelation was written to a church, a congregation that has logged out the owner of the church, and he's standing outside and knocking, and he's practically saying, I know not every one of you will listen to me. I know not every one of you will hear me but I stand at the door and I knock. There must be just one fellow in there who will hear and open the door of his heart to me. John 3, 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, again, individual, he knows it's not the whole world that will be saved, but it's the whole world that he loved. But he was sure there will be at least a remnant We came into this world one at a time. Genesis 25 from verse 21 to 26, Genesis 25 from verse 21 to 26, made it clear, even when twins are born, they came one at a time. Esau came first before Jacob. Even if the twins were to be delivered by Caesarean operation, they will still bring one out first before they bring the second. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans 14, verse 12. says, we are all going to give an account. But he didn't say, we will all give an account of ourselves. 
He said, everyone will give an account of himself. Individual. One at a time. The message of this week is not for everybody. It's for someone. That's why you find that David, any time he wants to talk about something very serious, he uses I. Psalm 23, verse 1. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. My shepherd. The same Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Just check there. I, with me, individuals. In Psalm 23, verse 6, Psalm 23, verse 6, some brethren at a stage after the finished ministration and they want to close after the grace, then they will say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I say, no, sir, that's not written. What is written? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow who? me all the days of my life and I shall dwell not goodness and mercy shall follow us it's not for us it's for me me and the result of my dwelling will be for me. So the result of your listening, hearkening diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. This week, we produce results for you as an individual. Psalm 27, verse 8. Psalm 27, verse 8. David said, When you said, Seek my face, my heart says, Thy face will I seek. It's my heart answering. You said it. Everybody heard you say, Seek my face. But it is my heart, not our heart. I don't know what you are thinking. I don't know how far you want to go in the Lord. I don't know how hungry for God you are. I don't know how thirsty. I can't thirst for you. I can't hunger for you. There are certain things in life you cannot delegate. The elders in Africa have a saying, no matter how wealthy you are, you can't ask your servant to go to the restroom for you. You have to go yourself. Psalm 52, Psalm 57, verse 7, I, 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 God have mercy on us, says, my heart is fixed, 
my heart, not our heart. My heart is fixed within me. I will praise the Lord. So take note of the word I. Know that that I is you and you alone. So if while the word of God is going on, you find somebody next to you taking pictures, don't let it bother you. That's the way it must be. It's an individual matter. The next word is must. I must. Not I may, not as if I'm responding to an advice. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, uh, the Almighty God said, I'm placing before you death and life blessing and causes, and then he gave an advice. Choose life. That one is an advice. You can choose if you want. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. But here, the Bible is saying must compulsory you have no choice in the matter. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. First Corinthians 9, verse 16. Paul said, Necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. I have no choice in the matter. When it comes to doing the work of God, you are not a volunteer. God does not use volunteers. He never calls for volunteers to do his work. He looks at somebody, chooses that fellow, once that fellow is chosen, that fellow has no choice, but must do the work. In John 15, verse 16, John 15, verse 16, says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. I'm the one who chose you. And the moment he chose you, The moment you find yourself becoming a minister of God, whether by life or by death, you must do what he wants. Philippians 1, from verse 20 to 21. Philippians 1, 20 to 21. Paul said, whether by life, or by death, God must be glorified. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20, he gave a commandment to those of us who call ourselves his ministers, go ye into the whole world. And it's very clear. Go, do the following. There's no room for maneuvering. There's no room for choice. It is a direct 
order. I believe I've told you the story before about a young couple, true story. Young couple just got married and they became missionaries to Africa. And they got to a place, got to a village, and they saw a place surrounded by a huge wall. Came to the man at the gate and said, Sir, what's behind the gate? And the man there said, That's a leper colony. And they asked, had somebody gone there to preach to them? The man at the gate said, nobody goes in there and comes back. Once we enter this gate, there's no coming back. But we would like to go and preach to them. The man at the gate said, you don't seem to understand. We throw food to them over the wall. Anybody who goes in there, is somebody that is already condemned to death. But we want to go, all right, so we insist on going, I will open the door, but once you go in, you're not coming out. When the husband looked at his young wife, what do we do now? The wife said, all the Lord said is go. He didn't say anything about returning. So the gate man opened the door. They went in, and the door was shut. I hope you understand the word must. Because the way we are doing the work of God now is at our convenience. The work is not to be done at your convenience. It is a must. It is a must if you want to remain part of the vine. John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 2. John 15 from verse 1 to 2. I am the vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth fruit, he forget it. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. You want to remain part of the vine you must do the work. Maybe we will stop doing the work of God at our convenience. Once we understand that there is a backsliding that can never be cured, that is the backsliding that comes as a result of your not doing the work. Because when it is a father that tears you away from the son, nobody can regraft you. God is not talking to your neighbor. He's talking to you. John 15 verse 6. John 15 verse 6 tells us any branch that the father tears off is going to the fire. I've heard particularly those who preach on limited grace that once you are born again, nothing can ever send you to hell. I beg to disagree. God born again, you become a part of divine. 
you don't produce fruit, you be turned from the vine. When you are turned from the vine, you will dry up. Men will gather you and throw you to fire. That's clearly the word of God. You must do the work unless you don't want your prayers answered. John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. You've not chosen me, I've chosen you, that you go and bear fruits, your fruits abide, that whatsoever you ask, the Father in my name, he might give it to you. Brethren, I don't know if you have observed that when you were a baby Christian, before you became a worker, almost as soon as you pray, the answer came. I don't know if you remember, or maybe it didn't happen like that to everyone. I don't know if you remember your early days as a Christian, before you became a worker, before you became a pastor, you had testimonies almost every week. I don't know if you have now observed that as you have become promoted, You've been commanding mountains to move, and mountains have refused to yield. Has God changed? Is he no longer in heaven? Is the earth no longer his footstool? Is his promises, uh, are his promises no longer here and amen? Why are my prayers being delayed? Maybe it is because the word must didn't sink in. And then the next thing is he said, I must walk. I must perform. I must do what he wants me to do. James chapter 1 from verse 22 to 25, James 1, 22 to 25, tells us we must not be hearers only, but we must be doers. that if we are not doers, we are deceiving ourselves. If I am not doing the work as if it is compulsory, according to Matthew chapter seven, from verse 24 to 27, Matthew seven, 24 to 27, I qualify to be called a fool. A fool is someone who hears the word and will not do it. And it will become like someone who is building his house on sand. And one of the things we know about fools, the people that God calls fools, according to Psalm 14, verse 1, Psalm 14, verse 1, are those who say there is no God. If I ask you, my beloved, do you believe there is God? You say, oh, sure. 
Why are you then careless with his work? Because those he calls fools, not me, are those who are not taking his work seriously. And those who do not know the meaning of the must here are people who have no fear of God. It is one thing to do the work when your supervisor, your senior officer is around. It's another thing to do the work when there's nobody around watching. Why? Because you fear the one who says you must do the work. Psalm 14 verse 1, Psalm 14 verse 1 says, the fear of the Lord, sorry, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, Proverbs 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Bible made it clear, wisdom is the principal thing. If we all fear God, the all-knowing God, we will not be doing his work uh, I'm looking for a word that is not so big, but there is this word they call lakadasikali or something, one big word. I do the work when I want. I do the work the way I want. I do as much of the work as is convenient for me. Means I have lost the fear of God. I'm going to remind you of the story of three sons. Matthew 21, from verse 28 to 32. Matthew 21, from verse 28 to 32. A father said to his son, go and walk in my farm. He said, I am not going. Later on, the Bible says he repented and went. What kind of son is that? The father said, go and walk. You told him to his face, I am not going. Oh, thank God he repented. But how will you feel if you give an instruction to your son and he replied you point blank, I'm not going to do it. At the least we will call that one rude. And in, if it were where I come from, something will follow immediately. But here in America, <laughs> 
there's very little you can do. Thank God for civilization. But maybe some of us pre prefer our uncivilized uh, like I've always said there are demons everywhere demons in Africa demons in America and the only difference between the demons in Africa and the demons in America is that the demons in Africa didn't go to school they are, they are uneducated they are raw and that makes it easier to recognize them makes it easier for them to be dealt with because if you see a man walking naked, where I come from, if he's coming on the right side of the road, you cross to the left, you dodge. But when you come to a place like this, you see demons who are well-dressed, driving a Cadillac. Uh, so before you know what they're about, they've already done a lot of damage. Thank God for civilization, and thank God for those of us who are not so civilized. Boy, who will say to his father, I'm not going. I'm not going to obey. Daddy is just saying his own. I'm going my own way. Even though he will repent later. Such a son needs to repent, not just casually. Such a son needs repentance of a deeper nature. Then comes the second son. The father said, go. And the son said, I will go. And did not. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 19. Proverbs 25, verse 19 says, Such a son is like a broken tooth. It's like a joint. It's like a foot out of joint. Someone you rely upon, but who let you down. At a critical moment, the Bible says it's like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. But then there is a third song. You say, we don't, we don't read it in that story. Oh, it's there. It's the one who was telling the story. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is the son who said, I will go, and he went. My prayer is that you'll be like that son. In Matthew 26, verse 39, Matthew 26, verse 39, that is the son who said, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Just what you want. That son, the third son, is the one who, according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, Hebrews 10, verse 7, who said, I've come to do thy will. Oh, God. But then let's move on because of our limited time. I, me, must compulsorily do or walk, and then what am I to walk? The walks. Not a walk. But the walk. 
Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, verse 21. He shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Before you were born, there is a specific work that God had earmarked for you as an individual. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5 made it clear. Before I formed you, I knew you. While you are seeing your mother's womb, I already ordained you, sanctified you for a particular work. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 9 to 10. Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10. I have said to over the nations, you are not in America by accident. God brought you where you can fulfill his original purpose for your life. I pray that you will hear from him. Because I'm trying my best to make it clear, but it's going to take the Holy Spirit to say to you, I brought you here for this purpose, not to do a work, but to do the work. Moses, for example, in Exodus chapter 3, from verse 1 to 12, Exodus 3, 1 to 12, God told him specifically, the work for you is to bring my people out of Egypt to come and worship me on this mountain. That is the work. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8. Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 8. Joshua, it is your assignment to divide the land to my people. All you've been doing so far, following uh, Moses, fighting the Amalekites, all of those ones are preliminaries. Joshua, the work for you is to divide the land to the people. Elisha, 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 19 to 21. 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21. Elisha, what you have been doing thus far is famine. And you are doing well. But the work for you is to be my prophet. The work. Not a walk. And so when Elisha left a walk and he began to do the walk, the result was Second Kings chapter four, verse eight to seventeen. Second Kings chapter four, verse eight to seventeen. He became extremely influential. We say to the widow, the Shunammite woman, you want me to talk to the king for you? You want me to talk to the commander in chief for you? Who do you want? Talk to me. I am convinced that if someone had been doing the work, by now, the president in this nation will already be sending for you. 
when they need help. I don't know the individual God is talking to, but that individual will hear from God today. In Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11, Peter was a fisherman. He was doing a walk. The day Jesus stepped into his boat, he was told what the walk for him was to be, fisher of men. When he started doing the work, beginning from Acts chapter 2, by the time we go to Acts chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, Acts 5, 14 to 16, his shadow began to heal the sick because he has started doing the work. Paul, known then as Saul of Tarsus, was a lawyer, a professor of law. He was doing a work. Acts chapter 22, verse 3. Acts 22, verse 3. He was doing a work. But, Galatians 1 from verse 13 to 16, Galatians 1, 13 to 16, he discovered that even from the mother's womb, God had already ordained that he will be preaching Christ. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16, Acts 9, 15 to 16, made it clear he was a chosen vessel. Don't forget, God is talking to only one individual. So what I'm saying might not be relevant to others, but God is zeroing in on someone, a chosen vessel. But not just the walk, the walks. And I hope whoever were that this message for is for will now listen hard. The walks, not just preaching, not even just planting churches, but much more. Acts, sorry, Mark chapter 3, from verse 13 to 15. Mark 3, 13 to 15. Those he chose. We are told what they will be doing. Not only will they be fellowshipping with God, and that's a work on his own. He has to be healing the sick. He has to be casting out demons. They are even uh, expected to be raising the dead. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 to 8. Matthew 10. From verse 7 to 8, as ye go, one, preach, two, heal, three, raise the dead, four, cast out devils. How much of the works have you been doing thus far?
Thank God you have been preaching. Many of you can preach. You can preach up a storm. How many have you healed? Oh, God is the healer, I know. <laughs> but like one small boy told me yesterday, he walks through human vessels, and you can't deny that. Maybe I was not given the gift of healing. Who told you that? He said here, as you go, preach, heal, raise the dead, cast out devils. Remember, not that I may, but I must. If I feel it is not compulsory to heal, I won't pay the sacrifice that will make healing easy. If I am not cornered, when somebody dies, I won't even pray much before I will say, let's call for, is it 911 or whatever you call for here, to come and take the mug, the dead fellow to the mug. But if you know, if my God will just let you understand that it's not just expecting preaching from you, but it's expecting you to be the channel of healing, the channel for raising the dead, If you know it is a must that you must cast out demons and that he said that there are some demons that won't go out except with fasting and prayer, maybe, just maybe, Our attitude to food might change. Maybe we will not spend all night sleeping. Maybe we'll be willing to pay the price. A woman shared a testimony not too long ago. I think the only child they had died in the middle of the night. Child was sick. We took the child to the hospital. The doctor there said there's nothing we can do for this child. So horse, the woman said, in that case, can you refer me to another hospital? Sure. So they referred. And on the way, they ran into a terrible ghost law for which we are very famous. And the child died. And the woman said, uh, I'm not going to take this. After five hours in the go slow, she suddenly realized, ah, at least my father will call his God and his God will answer. I will call the God of my father. And uh, I think I have an handkerchief here that he had uh, blessed before, laid the handkerchief on the child, and, and said, so and so mentioned the name, come back. When 
when you have no choice, your prayer will be different from when it doesn't matter whether he answers or not. After five hours, the child came back. So go slow or no go slow, there's no need now to go to the hospital. Are these powers reserved for only certain prophets and general messiahs? The power is there, resting in you, but to feel that the work must be done anyhow. There's no way we can win the Americas without signs and wonders. And it cannot be casual. Church as it used to be, things must change in the ministry of one person. Remember, I'm not talking to everybody, I'm talking to an individual. An individual who knows I must walk the walks. The walks of who? Of him that sent me. The walks of him that sent me. Not the walks of Pastor Adeboye. That's why I loved when I had someone say some time ago, I've, I've been serving you for all these years. I was amazed. Serving me? I thought we are together on the same platform. Serving him. The works of him that sent me, the works of him that sent the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Revelation 4, verse 11. All things that were created were created for his pleasure. The works of that we please him. John 5, verse 17. John 5, verse 17. Jesus Christ said, My father walketh either to, and I walk. The one who sent me is not I do. He is busy. Some people misunderstood Genesis chapter 1. They felt that after God created the heavens and the earth those six days and he rested on the seventh day, that from that day onward he has been resting. Jesus said, My father walketh either to, he is busy. Fortunately, he added. John chapter 20, verse 21. John 20, verse 21. He said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. The Father sent me to go and do his pleasure. I'm asking you to go and do his pleasure. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. Matthew 10, verse 40. He says, He that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. This assignment goes all the way to the Father. And then he added, John chapter 5, verse 30. John 5, verse 30. 
I can of my own self do nothing. That's good news. Because already the one that God is talking to must be by now a little bit troubled. Am I going to truly begin to raise the dead? Is deliverance ministry part of my ministry? Affine the ability to do such? The Lord said, I can of my own self do nothing. But the Father who sent me, he doeth the work. That's good news. I can't do it, Lord. But I know you can do it through me. That's all he's saying. That's why I advise those of us who are not around for the money devotion of yesterday morning. Get the tape. There is what is called the God factor. Let God do it. But he can only do it if you are willing to cooperate if you believe it can be done, he will see to it that it is done. If you believe that he can use you to heal, you will pay the price, and then he will produce the results. Because he will equip you for the work. As the Father sent me, how did he send me? With power. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Luke 24, verse 49. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until thou be endued with power from on high. The condition for being a minister, according to Acts chapter 6, from verse 1 to 3, Acts 6 from verse 1 to 3, is that you must be full of the Holy Spirit. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, sir. I speak in tongues, sir. I'm not arguing, sir. And I'm not arguing, ma. But the evidence must be there. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Acts 6, verse 8. Says, Stephen... A man full of the Holy Spirit performed miracles. Where is your evidence? Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. Acts 8, 5 to 8. Philip went to Samaria. One of the deacons went to Samaria and turn the whole city upside down. Just one fellow. Acts 
Acts 13, from verse 6 to 12. Acts 13, 6 to 12. When Paul was preaching to a governor and a sorcerer was trying to hinder the work, Paul, full of the Holy Spirit, moved the mountain out of the way and got his victory. We are dealing with a world of what we call the New Age. They are winning our youth with magic. We will need to demonstrate greater power to silence them and win back our youth or we'll be accountable to God. the power is there. Unfortunately, in a very subtle manner, the devil is reducing us to lukewarmness. We don't pray loud anymore. That's not politically correct. Where there is power, there must be noise. Where there is power, there must be noise. Why did they ground the Concord, the plane that can bring you from London to New York in about three hours, why did they ground it? They say it was noisy. Where there's noise, there's power. When I come to your country, we have to even beg you to shout hallelujah. That's very good. That's as loud you can, as, you, as America can make it. <laughs> no, I understand. I understand. <laughs> you are you are great people, men of timber and caliber. Remember years ago when I was asked to preach at the uh, Christmas carol at Asso Rock, and all the high and mighty were there, ambassadors, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. When I asked them to shout hallelujah, they tried. Until I said to them, the next fellow to shout hallelujah is only the one who will see the new year. When I asked them to shout, they shouted. <laughs> you tried. But the next fellow is going to shout. Is the one God I've been talking to. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> You've done very well. But suppose I say to you that there is someone here who 
this coming week we'll raise at least one fellow from the dead. So shall it be. You see, you need to realize something. Don't worry, I'm, about, I'm just laying the foundation tonight. I'm about to close now. When Jesus teaches in a place, the Bible says the power of God will be present to heal. I have discovered that when we preach about healing, God heals. When we pre when, if we say deliverance night, during the convention back home, if we say this is deliverance night, in, in those days when we were fewer, when we had enough space, on deliverance night, those of you who remember those days, a lot of demonized people will manifest because we have spoken about deliverance. If we teach on giving, that's why some of us preach sermons during offering, people will give. God chose this theme for you because he's keenly interested in someone who wants to walk the works of God but doesn't know how. It's not going to ask me to spend a whole weekend talking about just one thing if he hasn't got something in mind. Or shall I say, someone in mind. As the Father sent me, he said, so send I you. Sent with power. And the one we say, as the Father sent me, say, tarry ye. TBN deal with power from on high. And the Bible says, He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There is a difference between just speaking in terms idol worshippers, whether you believe it or not, speak in tongues. They call it incantations. But when the fire is behind, when we are not just baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we are baptized by fire, the result we show. And so we're going to close tonight. by crying to God one more time. I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want to be an ordinary minister. I want to be an example of someone who has been baptized by the Holy Ghost and by fire. I will tell you just one story, and it's up to you to pray. If you want to, if you are the one, you will know what to do. You've heard the story before, at least some of you. I was there at the redemption camp, walking up and down in the night. Hungry, thirsty, and I cried to God. I've been crying. 
God, I told you from day number one, I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want to be ordinary. I don't want ordinary to be a, a word that can describe me. I don't want to be ordinary. And I was serving you as much as I can. Lecturing in the university, making some money to do your work, but you pull me out. Now you have put me here where you have put me, and I lack the power to do the work that must be done. Father, let us reach an agreement. You either empower me or you take me home. I don't want to be ordinary. I refuse to be ordinary. And the ground under my feet shook. One of these days, we will back out the spot. There was an earthquake that was felt as far away as Ijebode. It was in the papers. Pictures hung on the wall were falling down. Nobody knew that it was somebody who was desperate, who cried to God, who got an answer that caused the earthquake. You are not here this week to joke. I am too old now to be traveling all these long hours to come and spend time with jokers. And I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to an individual. That individual now will go to the almighty God and say, you say, I must do your works? Yes, I'm ready. But the equipment I need you must give me tonight. The fellow concerned knows himself or herself. That fellow could go and pray. Uh, so if others are leaving after five minutes, shouldn't bother you. Uh, they might not be the ones God is talking to. But may God answer your prayers. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Brethren, you need to pray. You need to pray. This is an hour that you need to cry to heaven. You want to rise up on your feet. You want to take a very comfortable position wherever it may. You wherever you like to pick position, take it. Brethren, you cannot afford to be ordinary in this 21st century. You need the touch of heaven. You need the touch of God. You need the touch that is unique. Isaiah heard that voice that night. And he said, here I am, I, oh God. I cannot afford to go home empty-handed. I need the touch of heaven upon my life. Let your voice be the one that will resonate tonight into the heavens. 
that the one you are looking for is here, Lord. I am here, my Father, my Father. Do not leave me by myself. Whatever you need to change in me, let the heavens touch me tonight. Let that touch, let that circumcision of the earth be done tonight that I may receive a touch that I will never recover from forever. God is looking for that man tonight. Say, Father, tonight, circumcise my heart that I may walk the walk of him that has called me. I want to be that fellow, oh Lord, let it please you. Let the imperative nature of this assignment be done upon my spirit, man. No more casual approach to the things of the kingdom. No more looking across the fence and comparing yourself to another. No, sir. Say, Father, not another fellow but me. Not another fellow but me, oh God. Let it please you to lay your hand upon me. Let it please you to rest upon my life. It is not so much about my neighbor anymore, Lord. It is me, Lord. It is me, Lord. Touch me afresh tonight. Let that necessity be placed upon me like you did upon your servant, Apostle. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, from tonight, not tomorrow, from tonight, let me begin to hear your counsel. There is an assignment that you have committed into my hand. The Lord took Moses to the mountain top to bring him unto the understanding of this assignment. The Lord has brought you to this mountain, upon this mountain, that you may encounter him. It will be a great error if anyone leaves this place and there is no encounter. This is why you have been brought into his presence. And God has released his word. God has released his word. You cannot afford to walk away from this word tonight. Why don't you just say, Father, I say, even me, me alone. Let my life reflect the fact that you have brought me to yourself. He took them to the mountain top and spoke into their lives. How will it be that you will leave this place and it will not be evidence that my Father has spoken to you? Why don't you say, Lord, from tonight, from this hour, let it be evident that you have spoken to me and your word has rested upon my spirit, man. Let me not walk away from it anymore. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word that heals a man, that you have sent to me this hour. Let the word quicken me. Let the word heal me. Let the word settle me. Let the word set me on high. Let the word of God set me forward. Never to look back again. On this mountain, I will never regret ever coming. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, open my eyes that I may identify the assignment you have brought me into this commission to do. You have brought me into this commission for a reason. Tonight, Lord, open my eyes that I may see and to understand it and to give me an idea of how to work with it, O oh God. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of your presence upon my life, not only will it quicken me, but will set me ahead. To move in the right direction. Brethren, pray. Pray, you have been told. It is not an assignment that you want to just take casually. Brethren, if you need to pray, you better pray. Irrespective of status. Don't allow anything, oh Lord, to, 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 to deny you of this moment. The Spirit of the Lord is in the house. The Spirit of the Lord is in the house. The father in the house told you already, you, I am not here to waste your time. And he, he said it, and that has a lot of impartation and implication. Why don't you cry to God? Who knows? You may never hear it like this anymore. 
But my father, my father, here am I. Send me now. Send me. Anyhow and whenever you want me to do it, send me today. Brethren, before we begin to run, why don't you let God hear your voice? Let your voice be very clear to heaven. That you are very clear about what you are demanding from God. You cannot afford to visit this mountain and go back home and remember say, whatever assignment is in your hand, why don't you pray and say, Father, here am I. Here am I. Send me, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, send me, O God. Give me that commission and lay your hand upon me. Do not allow the enemy to rejoice over my life ultimately. I want to finish well. I want to finish strong. I want to complete the assignment. I want to fulfill the purpose for which you have brought me into your presence. Here am I. You me, Lord. Anywhere and whatever you want me to do. That works that you have sent me to do. Reveal them to me. Grant unto me to understand your ways. Let the imperative nature of the assignment be battered into my spirit, man. Set me on fire, O oh Lord. Set me on fire, O oh Lord. Brethren, for all you care to know, some people will still walk out of this place, they say, but not you. But not you. But not you. I say, Father, not me. Why don't you begin to make some commitment to God and say, from tonight, from tonight, I will begin to give you my time. I will begin to give you my life. I will begin to give you my presence. Make some commitment to God. Because if you don't make commitment to God, it doesn't show you are serious. It's a commitment upon the altar that my father witnesses. What is it that you have brought to the altar tonight? And say, Father, as a commitment, as an exchange for this commitment tonight, this is what I will do from tonight. God helping me. Do you want to begin to pray conscientiously every night for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, for 30 minutes? You can tell God, this is my commitment to the fact that I'm ready to work the work of God, of him that has sent me. Not the work of my, my leaders, not the work of my boss, not the work of my senior, but the work of him that sent me. He said to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Why? Because you have not done the will of my father. The will of my father. Lord, bring me to the point of doing your will. Bring it to the point of obeying you, the counsel. Hello. Pray, brethren, before we begin to round up now. Why don't you let God hear from you? This is my commitment to this assignment, to this foundation that you have laid for me tonight. I will do this for heaven. Not in terms of just giving money. Your money is good. He wants a sacrifice upon the altar. If there is a sacrifice upon the altar, the fire will fall. But for an empty altar, there is no fire. There is no fire. Lord, this is my sacrifice. This is my sacrifice in terms of hours of prayers on a daily basis that my father may find a sacrifice upon the altar. Will you be the one? Say, Father, here is my sacrifice. Brethren, we have just about three or four minutes to go. Let God hear that commitment from you. Thank you, my father. That, Lord, as we commit our serving to your hand, as we commit to this that you have spoken to us tonight, we pray that the Spirit of God will do a work in our life. And I will not miss you. I will not fail you. Behold the sacrifices of your sons and daughters. They are bringing it to the altar. Let it please you to accept their sacrifice. Bring something to the altar. Tell the Father, here am I with my sacrifice. Use me, Lord. Your time is your life. Whatever part of your life that you give to him tonight, my Father will recognize it. My Father will recognize it. And he will visit the altar of your life. You are telling God as a sign of commitment.
commitment. I am raising this altar unto the Lord. Which altar are you going to raise? An altar of sacrifice, an altar of your life, an altar of your time, and allow God to show us. And my Father will do so. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, let's say better. Amen. Shall we rise up on our feet, please? Shall we rise up on our feet, please? Brethren, I'm going to pray with us. And I'm trusting God that you have made your own commitment. It's an individual thing like you have been, you have been told. And you are telling God, set my heart on fire for you, Lord. That's the last prayer I want us to pray. I have encouraged us to make a sacrifice on the altar. If you want the fire of the Lord to come upon the altar of your life, you need a sacrifice. It cannot be empty. That's why I said you should pray that prayer. But we are going to pray now. The last prayer before we move tonight, set my life on fire afresh. You are praying for yourself. Don't pray for your brother. Don't pray for your sister. Don't pray for your husband. Don't pray for your wife. Pray for yourself. Set my life on fire afresh for the assignment that lies ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't you pray that prayer? Let God hear you, brethren. Set my life on fire for the assignment you have committed into my hand. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will never remain the same again. Set me ablaze. Set me ablaze on the fire of the Holy Ghost. From that which you have spoken to me tonight, my altar is no longer empty. My sacrifice is upon the altar. Set me on fire, O oh Lord. Let the freshness of your fire come upon me, Lord, that this assignment may be carried out according to your intention, according to your purpose, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray oh in Jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you Lord for tonight thank you for this opening charge that you have given us we bless your name and we worship you we believe that you have heard our cry we have opened our heart to you oh Lord from tonight we have set a commitment and sacrifice upon our altars and that is why we cry that you will set us on fire let your fire come afresh upon us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Set your fire afresh upon us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the work be revealed to us. And let the works begin to manifest in our lives. In our ministry. In our place of work. Wherever we go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the vessels that you have used to deliver the word into our life. We pray that you will bring it with another dimension tomorrow, Lord. That, Lord, you will complete that which you have started in our life. Nobody will go empty-handed. In the name of Jesus Christ, set us on the course to set the entire nation for God. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's say a better amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You will please have your seats. May the Lord pay attention to all our prayers in Jesus' name. I said, may the Lord pay attention to all our prayers in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please, let's listen to the following announcement. The following people should please wait to see Pastor Baya de Yokono, uh, Pastor Edward Somori, Pastor Rosemary Wallington, Pastor Ari Ike Okonlawon, Dickiness Modupe Ade Oito, uh, Pastor Busola Oladele, and also want to remind you and let you know that the program continues tomorrow at 9 a.m., Please let us come and come and tarry. And as we do, the Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. This other announcement is regarding the Pastor Seed family. There's a program that is going on uh, side by side with this uh, program, uh, the conference. 
So they are encouraging all our pastors to allow their children to please log in. It's a virtual convention of the Pastor Seed family. So they are encouraging us and appealing to us to allow all our children to log in right now continually um, to allow our children as soon as we leave this place or during this, uh, during this program to log in on the YouTube and also on Instagram at PSF America and also at www.psfamerica.org. Please, we want to encourage us to allow our children, pastors, seed to please log in. And as we do, the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. Can I please rise on our feet as we begin to thank the Lord? Let's appreciate God. Let's thank Him for the first day of uh, this program, the Workers and Ministers Convention or Conference 2022. Ask the God of heaven that all He has done in your life and in my life shall be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord. Appreciate God. Give Him praise. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Thank you, eternal Father, for what you have done tonight. And let's lift our voice also unto God and pray for tomorrow, for what he's going to do from the, from the morning till the evening. Lift your voice and cry unto the God of heaven. I ask God Almighty, help me and take all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Lastly, you are going to pray for strength tomorrow, that you are going to wake up early to be here also at 9 a.m., that all that will be done tomorrow, God will strengthen you, God will strengthen me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice to God and say, Father, thank you for what you are going to do tomorrow. Strengthen me for my inner man, that I will wake up early tomorrow to be here, to tarry in the place of prayer, and also to listen to what you have in stock for me this weekend. And Lord, I will not live the same way. I will come in in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Eternal Father, we want to thank you one more time. Thank you for the way you started this program with us. And thank you for the way you are, you are ending it tonight. Lord, we are praying that in the name of Jesus Christ, that as we have come, thank you for the deposit in our life today. Lord, we pray that you do more tomorrow in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that in the name of Jehovah, Every deposit that you have deposited tonight, Lord, we have asked that in the name of Jesus, it shall do us good in Jesus' name. We will run with it in the name of Jesus Christ. Take all the glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Look at somebody and say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. God bless you. Johnny, mercy back home.